welcome to Inside Healthcare. Besides the flu, there's a lot of cold and other viruses floating around right now. I have a little bit of a head cold right now, so I'm an example of one of that. So we've come to the urgency room to talk with Dr. Christy Trussell about some of the things that you're seeing at this time of the year and besides the flu. So um, apparently the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says there's 150,000 children each year that are hospitalized with RSV. What is that exactly? Right, so RSV is a, is a term that's short for respiratory syncytial virus. This is a virus that goes a little bit beyond the common cold. It commonly affects children under the age of three. I was gonna say, who's at risk for it, yeah. Right, and it's, it's a little bit different than the common cold. The common cold is mostly upper respiratory symptoms, so nose, throat, congestion, and perhaps a little bit of cough, but this virus really moves down into the lungs. It causes bad inflammation in the, in the mid-sized airways, and it really damages the, the cilia, which are the inner uh, little hairs in the respiratory tract that help clean, help get mucus up, and these kids can get really sick. Sometimes the illness is, is very mild and much like a, what we would call an average cold, but there is a subset of, of children who get very, very sick from this. As we said, yeah, a lot of them are hospitalized as a result of it. Mm -hmm. So how do you know when your child has, whether it's something mild and it is more this RSV, more serious, and when should they go seek? emergency care? So really in any sort of viral illness you want to look at how your child's doing with breathing and hydration. Those are those are kind of the top of the list of things to look for. So for breathing, looking at the child, is the child breathing really fast, really hard? Do they have to be held, in, held or sit in a certain position to feel comfortable breathing? Are they using the muscles in their tummy, the muscles in their shoulders and their neck to help them breathe? Those are all warning signs that you should seek medical care immediately. And is there something you can at, do at home to help your child until you go to the hospital? Or? So for for some of these illnesses, suctioning out the nose, particularly in the younger children, 18 months or two years or less, being using some really good nasal suctioning um, can help clear that mucus out. Babies in particular need to be able to breathe through their nose in order to suck, take a bottle. So that can really help upper respiratory symptoms in a baby. Um, but in, in keeping their fluids up, so offering small amounts of fluids really frequently. Older children, have to, we often remind folks that anything that's liquid at room temperature counts. So freezy pops or pop strolls or ice cream oh, sometimes can be advice. enticing when children aren't feeling as well. Well, you've talked a lot about the RSV. What about um, croup? I know when my daughter was about a year old, I could hear this and I go, what is this? And, then, and we, she ended up being hospitalized for a couple of days as a result of it, yeah. yeah. What is croup? So croup is a viral illness that affects the, in the, the, the larynx, so the middle of the airway, right where the vocal cords are. And this tends to affect children five and younger, but particularly three and younger are the kids that tend to get sicker. They have a smaller airway to begin with, so any swelling at those vocal cords, which is the narrow point of the airway, mm -hmm. uh, really can compromise their ability to breathe. Croup typically causes this very characteristic berky seal-like mm -hmm. cough. And I would say even sometimes as I hear the child being roomed from, from the front, and I, I can hear the cough and say, ooh, that, uh, that child has croup. Yeah, as a, a new mom though, I had no idea, you know, is this some, you know, what is it, you know? And then treatment for it? So there, so oftentimes children need a special nebulization treatment to decrease that swelling in the vocal cords. Um, the barky cough uh, is helped by that, but really what we're worried about is what's called strider, which is noisy breathing as a result of that swelling, and that means that the, the larynx is getting too small to let the air comfortably pass through. Um, when that happens, we, we give a, a nebulization treatment of epinephrine to decrease swelling, and then we also give a steroid that lasts in the body over the course of a couple of days to, to reduce that swelling and make sure that the child's breathing well. And again, when in doubt, bring them to the urgency room or seek other emergency care then. Right, if your child is having noisy breathing or difficulty breathing, that's absolutely something we wanna see you at the urgency room for, or you know, in other cases, the, the emergency department, your primary doctor, but absolutely if your child is having trouble breathing, we want them to be seen. You know, in the, the cold, everyone gets some. I, I understand children on the average will get about five colds in a year. So what should we be doing as parents to protect our young ones from you know, coming down with the flow, the cold or reducing the number of colds this winter? 
Well, so colds are spread primarily by touch. So good hand washing, making, uh, making sure that you're wiping down and disinfecting if you're in a group of kids, washing before and after play dates or trips to trips out to uh, parks or zoos, etc. And I think, yeah, coming up on the holidays just around the corner, so that's another good time to make sure that they're all doing those things. Yeah, absolutely. And other um, treatment for colds, what's the best thing that you recommend? So there's really no cough cold medicine that's approved or safe for children under the age of four. Mm -hmm. So Tylenol and ibuprofen to treat fever, certainly we want to keep fever down and children comfortable. That helps with irritability, it helps with metabolic demand and need for hydration, makes the child more comfortable. Um, and then hydration and a little yeah. bit of love. <laughs> a lot of love, yeah. yeah. And then also again, when should you know that it's maybe going out it's no longer a cold, but it's really, it's lingering on and the symptoms seem to be worse. When should you bring them to the urgency room? Right, and this, the, this, this comes with looking at your child, knowing your child. If they seem sicker than they usually would be with a usual cold, that's certainly a reason to be seen. Breathing hard, um, certainly if they're ever lethargic so there aren't, they're sleepy and unable to be roused well, if they're not drinking well, um, if they're not urinating, depending on the age of the child, at least a good couple of times a day. You know, babies we say really, you know, four to six hours, older children you can st stretch that out a little okay. bit for, but we, don't, we, wanna see, we wanna see good production of urine, even the setting of illness. Um, trouble breathing we kind of talked about. That's, those are really the main things. And what would be some of the other things that parents could bring their, should bring their child to the urgency room for? What are some of the other things that you treat? So at the urgency room, we see a full spectrum. We see a lot of children. We see a lot of children for a lot of different things. Um, the uh, Anything from injuries to these illnesses that we've discussed, and even some more serious stuff like abdominal pain and uh, check for appendicitis, urinary infections. All right, any uh, final advice for our viewers? Good hand washing and stay healthy this winter. All right, great advice, thanks. All right, thank you. We'll be back with more right after this. Son, love is like the ocean. You have to tread the oh, waters. Oh, Dad, that's not the kind of help I needed. Jessica, will you go to prom with me? Yes. Thousands of teens in foster care can't wait to share their first with you. Welcome back to Inside Healthcare. I've heard from several people these days on how depressed they're feeling or anxious or even stressed out about the upcoming holidays. We'll for some tips and ways to how to beat those winter blues, we're very pleased to have back with us Laura Fairweather. She's a national board certified health and wellness coach and a certified healing touch practitioner. So thank you for being back with us, Laura. Yeah, thank you for having me. So what causes, why is something about this time of the year are we seeing people getting anxious, being depressed, and what's some of the major causes of mm -hmm. that? Well, it's important to know that anybody can um, have the seasonal or winter blues, and there's lots of reasons um, why that happens. Um, well, you know, obviously it's dark and it's cold outside, Yeah. so it really is hard to get out there and get moving around and be around other people, and sometimes when we're just being a bunch of couch potatoes, you know, we can kind of get into a downward spiral and not feel very good about ourselves. And even, I think sometimes the food too, we tend to want to eat more carbs or something like that. Oh that yeah, well think about it, even especially with the holidays and everything coming oh, up. Yeah. And all Tell of me the, about it. Yeah. All of the parties and everything that you're, that you're expected to go to and all the great foods that they're in, you know, we're, we're eating completely different. And our food and our mood goes hand in hand, right? Yeah, there is a connection. <laughs> yeah, definitely a connection. So one of the things that's really important to remember about food is maybe not what to remove from your diet, but what to include in your diet. Oh, good advice. Yeah, so it's really important to um, think of some healthy nutritional things to eat along with some of the fun traditional foods that we want to enjoy as well. So one of the ideas might be, you know, have a healthy snack before you go to one of those parties. I try to do that. Yeah, that's really good advice. Yeah, yeah that's a great then thing. Then I'm not tempted to eat some of the other things that I probably not should oh. be eating. Yeah. yeah, it's really easy to do. And sometimes it's even nice if you're bringing a dish to a party to bring something that's healthy because somebody else, just like you, might appreciate having some healthy choices mm -hmm. as well. So, and that is one way to help mo change your mood and things. What would be some other things that you can do if you're just feeling anxious and, and nervous or stressed out? Yeah, that's a good question. 
Um, one of the best things you can do is just get up and move. I don't like to always say exercise because that's kind of intimidating to some people, but just get some activity in your life. Movement really helps to increase the serotonin in your body and get some of those natural uh, mood lifters happening. Um, what I really like to recommend to people is get outside, get in the sunlight, get out and move around outside if you can. I know it's cold, but get some good layers of clothes go out there we have lots of great parks and trails to take advantage of out there you can go snowshoeing and skiing some places even just let you um they they give them out on loan even to let you do that oh yeah the the state parks do that yeah the state parks can do that yeah. and one of my favorite things to do in the winter time is to actually go to the como conservatory oh i love going in there isn't especially it, when it's the coldest day oh isn't that just wonderful <laughs> yeah. i mean we got all the windows with the bright lights and um the heat and a little bit of humidity in the air and the plants and you get to see animals and reptiles and things like that and it just feels like a breath of fresh air. Oh, that's really good advice. Yeah. And then with the holidays just around the corner, people I've already heard people saying they're getting stressed out about that already. Yeah. yeah. And the commercials are starting to run in the ads. Oh. And it's like it <laughs> Yeah, it just feeds you. I mean, there are a lot of expectations that you feel around the holidays. And the commercials will put a little pressure on you too. Um, you have, you know, between financial expectations when they want you to buy things on commercials and um, expectations for your time to go be a part of all of the gatherings. You got work, you got friends, you got uh, family, and they may even want you to host things. Yes. That's a lot. So it's really important to um, step back and make a plan and, and maybe um, allow yourself to say no. You know, oh, give that's your, a hard one. It is, it is. Um, but give yourself permission to do that because you might want to look at, okay, there are all these different things that I can do. Maybe make some choices on maybe some of them you don't stay as long. Maybe you don't go to all of them. And maybe it's a good idea to think about who's going to be at those gatherings and what people that are at the gatherings give you the energy and what people might not. And so Yeah, I'm you know. one of those that gets energized around people, but I know other even in my family they they they're much better just, you know, celebrating alone and things like that. So I try to respect that as well. Oh yeah. yeah. It's good to respect that. Um, but you know, make sure that you try to get out even if you're somebody that likes to spend a little bit of time on your own and, and make some connections too. One great thing to do is get out and volunteer. Maybe reach out and try to find somebody else that's out there that's isolated and can't get out and reach out to them and have a nice conversation with yeah. them. And I know that sometimes you work a lot with seniors in that and mm -hmm. I think some of these can't be an issue for them, especially at this time of year for them. Yeah, it's if really lost somebody. Yeah, yeah. They, they don't have a way to get out and, you know, maybe have transportation to get places. and Their health isn't as good as it used to be. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So it's, uh, it's great to keep those people in mind. Think about people who are in your family, maybe some neighbors or people that you might know, or reach out to some organizations that could use your help. You know, I mentioned that you're a Healing Touch practitioner. For folks not familiar with Healing Touch, what mm -hmm. is it all about? And is that something that we can use to help us get through some of those stressful times? Sure. Healing Touch is one great way that you can use to um, relax and just kind of re-energize or balance your body. Um, it's, a, it's something that works on your relaxation response. So if you're feeling anxious, um, go see a Healing Touch practitioner and, and they will make you feel a little more healthy and whole and reduce that anxiety and help you be able to manage your way through your holiday. So we have um, areas in our body that are really helpful to have that healing touch. I know mm -hmm. just a hug feels good. Oh, and that's <laughs> and that's healing touch right there. Is I it? mean, we do healing touch all the time. I mean, if you think about it, you know, a little kid hurts themselves and they come and give you a hug and give them a hug, that's healing touch too. So it's very important that um, you know, we think about our bodies as a whole because we look at it from um, emotional, physical, mental, spiritual standpoint. Yeah, mm -hmm. I just had my granddaughter this morning. We were just asking me because she had a little owie and I was going to kiss it. She goes, why do you kiss it? And I said, because it makes, doesn't that make it feel better? Sure. And yeah. So That's that healing little... touch. So yeah. we do it all the time and we don't even know we do it. So, but yes, that is a, that is a very important thing to have in our lives. Mm -hmm. Any other tips or advice that you can give our viewers to make it less stressful this holiday or even if they're just feeling anxious? Sure. Um, well, one of the things I did mention too is, you know, some of the financial stresses. Make sure that you 
you look at your money. A lot of people have that with the holidays coming up. Um, maybe uh, look at not giving everybody a gift. Come up with an idea on how to bring one gift and play some fun games in order to do those gift exchanges. Or one of the things that I really like to do is maybe make a coupon and give that coupon to somebody and say, let's do something together maybe at a later time. And you don't have to cram everything into the same time. So that would be one thing. Definitely get outside and exercise and um, connect with other people and have some fun. If you're having problems because there's been some loved ones in your life that you've lost, that's a really hard thing for some people. Find some ways to honor that person. One of the things that I do I lost my grandmother is um, every year I make her famous fudge and um, oh, I kind of think about her and honor her and, chan and oh, channel her yeah. in um, with me when I do that. Oh, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. What really good advice. And if someone um, wants to get more information, is there a way that they can reach out to you? Mm -hmm. or? Yeah, so a great idea to um, uh, try to get yourself through the holiday and reduce some of your stress is uh, maybe one idea is to work with a health coach. Some people don't know there's a health coach out there that can help them make a plan to get through the holiday. And um, if you, you work with a health coach, they might be even able to determine if there is some extra help you might need beyond that to go see your doctor. There might be some simple things that are happening with you that they can fix too. So they can contact you at EnvisionU? Um, EnvisionUWell.com mm -hmm, is my website. Well, Laura, always great to have you with us and great tips and advice for our viewers. So thank, thank you, you so much. much for having me today. And have a wonderful stress-free holiday. <laughs> you too. Thanks. Thank you. And we'll be back with more right after this. Let me tell you about the toughest guy on earth. He does the work of two jobs, but only gets paid for one. Caregiving is tougher than tough. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. Joining us now to talk about how art is helping breast cancer patients and survivors and the importance of kindness this month. We're pleased to have with us Cheryl from Pass Along Gifts. So thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me. And we have some beautiful paintings here. So tell us about Pass Along Gifts. What's it all about and what are these paintings? These are yours. <laughs> your these, creation. these are mine. Um, but Pass Along Gifts is really a concept that's about sharing kindness and unleashing the power of giving. And the way we do that is with beautiful, inspirational works of art, but they're meant to enjoy. However, the real power happens when you decide to pass along that gift and give it to somebody who inspires you. You share a little message, uh, the date, and uh, why. So they would get like a little card like like painting like this, that? Yes, a, a duplicate of that. And then on the bottom, there's also a tracking feature. So when you start this journey, you can follow it online later. And so everybody that gets it gets to pay, be part of the journey. And because we think kindness and sharing is so important, we donate 50% of our profits to charity. And this series of paintings was created for the American Cancer Society for breast cancer. Um, both my mom and sister are breast cancer survivors, so it was a really near and dear cause for me. Yeah, I was going to say, it really is a love of art, you know, like such a touching thing to be able to pass it along to other women. Then and there's too. so many. One in eight women will be affected, uh, will have breast cancer at some point in their lives. And do all of the paintings have like the flower theme like this? Well, this is the what I do. I like to paint flowers, bright colored flowers. I love flowers. And uh, they're just cheerful and fun. And what I did is I also began to hide the word joy in all of my bouquets. So in every picture there's a joy the in The word it? joy is hidden because my message is joy is always there. Sometimes we have to look for it. And that's oh, why it's I hidden that. within that. Because joy is something that we can choose. And kindness. Um, those are things that we get to actively participate in. And when you choose that and you look for it, you will find it. And did I understand too that one of your granddaughters Oh, yes. Help you with some of these? So when I painted the series, my granddaughter came and painted with me. Oh, And she awesome. had to do her own series. And then she decided to do her own videotapes. And, and how old bit. is she? She's seven. Oh, my gosh. And she's wonderful. And she, she actually joined us at the Breast Cancer Walk and uh, had her paintings available for people to purchase and sold them. 
Oh, that is so wonderful. Yes. So this is something that you started recently or been you've been doing this for a while now with the pass along gifts? Well, it started out of uh, sort of taking a tragedy and turning it into something beautiful. I was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis back in 2009. It had been in my cervical spine in particular and there was no fluid going through on some levels. So they did a horrible surgery that has to open up four levels of the cervical spine. But it was successful. I was able to go back to work. Unfortunately, six months after that, we were in a head-on car accident. Both cars traveling 55. She crossed the center line, oh rolled God. twice, actually popped a screw loose. So I truly have a screw oh, loose. Thank goodness you're with <laughs> us today. And that is what I believe, is that it was a miracle I survived. And I chose to look at it from that perspective. Um, unfortunately, it made the disease worse. I ended up having to go on long-term disability. And in that process of really redefining who am I and where do I fit in and how do I find some level of feeling in all the numbness, I began to paint. And as I spread the bright colors on the canvas, I felt something. And the more I painted, uh, the more I collected these paintings. And when people came over and complimented them, I said, take one, but don't give it back. And don't put it down in the basement. I know you're not going to want to live with it forever. But find somebody else and pass it along. And wow, that's how the idea that began. That is fantastic. And I just feel this passion now for helping organizations uh, to raise money, to help people find images that really represent their vision and values and then share that with their circle of influence. And because they're also including a charity, it really says a lot about the organization. And they can find out more information online with the Pass Along Gifts on your website. Then, yes, passalonggifts.com. But you also, you were talking about the kindness. So I understand National Kindness Day is coming up this month. Tell yes. us what that's all about. And it seems like we need more kindness than ever in this day and age. Absolutely. And, and it's actually a worldwide movement. And uh, World Kindness oh, Day is, World is actually kindness. November 13th. But kindness is really about the whole month. And we've actually helped put together a super, super simple three-step kindness program. Anybody can do this. And we put the program on our website so you can download it. And it's, it's free. It's free. It's a PDF. And you simply go and print off the different components. It's three steps. See kindness, do kindness, and share kindness. Because all things, all three of those things, generate wonderful feelings. And there's actual research on the impact of kindness on us physically and emotionally. And so the way we see kindness is I created these little PDFs that you can download in little little tiny can you um, read one of us? What is, what is signs that says on here, thank you for leaving your kind fingerprint on the world. And on the back, it's just a little fingerprint design. And so when you see oh, somebody doing nice. something kind, give them this. That's how you notice it. Then we also created a whole PDF, 36 different cards of kind acts. And you just cut them up into little cards and have people choose some kind acts they're going to commit to doing in the next 24 to 48 hours. And it doesn't have to be on the 13th of November. It Not can be at any all. Time. Any time. And so it doesn't have to even be in November. Actually. It doesn't have to be any time. And a family can do this. You just think about the impact that you're having. Especially coming up on the holidays, that would be a nice way to give someone a gift. That yes. Could be giving all the time. Yeah. And then the third step is to share kindness. So we encourage people to make um, a kindness wall or a poster, something along the lines of this. You know, post kindness here. And then take just a container with post-it notes and some pens. That would be a great thing to do like on Thanksgiving when families are getting Absolutely. together. Absolutely. And post them. And what a wonderful way to physically see that in front of you. And in an office or a business, what a great way to encourage others. And it doesn't have to be what you did, what you noticed too. And the idea is to continue to share that. Go out on social media and share it there. That's a great idea. Yeah. yeah. Can you reach even people outside of your immediate friends and family and stuff exactly. like that? Exactly. 
because we're inspired when we do that. And that's really, you know, our Pass Along Gifts is an extension of that because you're really beginning a pay it forward journey. Mm -hmm. But it's really so important, especially now, you know, it's real easy to focus on the darkness and the things that are negative but we need to choose to look at the positive and there's way more kindness and way more good out there if we choose to look for it. So again, it's on your website and the yes. website is, what was the email address? It's passalonggiftsplural.com. And right on the front page, um, just click it, it's a PDF, you download it, print it, and it's easy to use, and I put and instructions. Have information <laughs> on the kindness as well as on the on gifts. On along gifts, and there's a number of things to choose from, and we also help people put things together that are meaningful to them. Any final comments for our viewers about kindness or about passing it along or paying it forward? It doesn't yes. necessarily even have to be your artwork. Right. I, I think that is the thing that I learned in my journey is that, uh, you know, you have a choice in life and you can choose to find joy and you can choose kindness. Um, you, not many things, uh, some things happen to you, but it's the choices that you make that really define how your life goes forward. And I just encourage people to find the positive and that is really the, the bottom line of kindness is finding the positive. Well, it's really been a pleasure to have you with us today and to share all of this with our viewers. So thank you so much, Cheryl. Thanks for having me. Good luck with everything. and Thank you. Have a wonderful upcoming holiday. So, so thank, thank you. you so much. And finally, kindness was evident at one local neighborhood where all the neighbors got together to create a community garden this summer, including some of the intellectually disabled neighbors. So take a look. These are real blueberries. This is spectacular. Some herbs. Um, we have squash out there. I did some of the squash, the beans, the tomato plants. Plants out here are just thriving. Keeping it watered, keeping weeds out. Everyone has has strengths, and they should be. Everyone should have the opportunity to to contribute what what they're able. This community garden is is a way for for people to do that, for people to contribute and to connect with neighbors. It turns out there was a lot of interest for, for the garden, which we were really excited about. Beautiful place to come, have working hands. It's more of the home feel. Good vegetables. But you don't need to go to go to grocery store, it's right back there. You didn't know your neighbors. Didn't know either one until the garden project. Almost like family. The whole goal is for people to make connections and so especially if the guys living here can make those connections, that's, that's the ultimate goal. A special thanks to Washington County Public Health and Environment for the statewide Health Improvement Partnership grant and funding the garden. Woodbury Thrives, New Directions, Inc., and the University of Minnesota Extension Service and Washington County Master Gardeners for their expertise in planning and maintaining that beautiful garden. Well, that's our program for you. Thank you for joining us. We'll join and join us next time on Inside Healthcare. We'll see you then, everyone.